Okay, new products this week. Yep. First up. Geostem. This is a cute one. We got a couple samples of these and we actually thought uh, this was a really cute idea. So the Raspberry Pi Zero can act as a USB gadget. That means when you plug it in, it acts like a USB client because like the USB pins can be their host or client mode. And this is a little like PCB and you see you fit onto the bottom. You have to solder at four points, the V bus ground, D plus and D minus. Then it comes, it comes with two plastic screws um, and you put it on there. And then when you plug it in, it, it, you can have the Raspberry Pi Zero act as a USB dongle. It's gonna be an interesting way for you to, you know, if you have a cluster of these that you want to uh, configure or you want to have it act like a USB drive or you just want to connect directly over serial through USB. Um, we have a guide on how to use the Raspberry Pi Zero um, in gadget mode. It's not too hard. You just have to edit your boot config and add a line and then um, just uh, um, enable one or two things. And um, yeah, your Raspberry Pi Zero is a USB stick. Um, so here it is. But yeah, the only thing to watch for is, you know, you do have to solder. Uh, it on and there's a couple solder points here and it doesn't work with every Raspberry Pi Zero It works with the latest Raspberry Pi Zero W 1.3 But there's a couple of earlier versions and the little dots on the bottom did move around so it won't be like a You know perfect fit. Uh, we don't really recommend it for anything other than the Pi Zero W 1.3 and then you just solder it on and you solder this connector and then like boop Bob's your uncle USB Okay, next up um, next up, we have um, two packs, and this is the first pack for Pi Hole. We um, did two guides for it. It's, this is a really awesome software written Oops. for Raspberry Pi. This is one kit. The first pack yeah. is a Raspberry Pi Zero W with a Pi OLED, and it's a, sorry, the Pi Zero W H. It's fully assembled. You plug the Pi OLED in, you put the SD card in, you run the software to install it, and uh, you've got this ad blocking device that sits on your network. You set up as your DNS server and it it just drops all your ads. It works with tablets and phones and computers, it works with everything. So you don't have to install any software on your computer, you don't have to install any extensions. Um, you just uh, you know run this and have it, you, you IP address, you plug that into your phone, and it works great. I use it at home all the time. So here's one that we've got on the overhead. There's another Pi Zero. Um, and you can see it's got the Pi OLED that's plugged in. It's really handy because it'll tell you. Yeah, you, how many? It'll tell how you ads how many blocked. ads. We just blocked. turned this on. 149 ads already. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jeez. Two clients, and the IP address. That's really handy because you do need to have the IP address in order to um, put into your, your domain name for your phone. So it, it tells you the stats if it's running. Um, you can you know, change the code if you want to have it display other stuff. But yeah, so 149 ads blocked. I think it works great, um, and it you know can automatically have it update and get the latest add um, server details, but it yeah. works over DNS. So again, it works with every This is really good, as you said, every for computer. tablets and mobile devices, because you can't really stop those ads, but now you can. Yep, and this is what I use at home. So um, support right. Pi-hole, but also if you want to pick up a pack, uh, do that. Speaking of, now we got another All one. Right, so let's say you're like, oh, I really like that little Pi Zero Pi-hole, it's cool, but it's over Wi-Fi. I want to use a really nice Raspberry Pi 3. I want to have Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi so it's more responsive. Maybe you're running it for like a really big company or household or whatever. So we have a pack for the Raspberry Pi 3. You could use it with the 2, but the 3 has Wi-Fi, so we recommend that instead. And it comes with a 2.0-inch color Pi TFT. And there's a little um, the pad, PADD software. It gives you even more details. It gives you like the host name. It tells you the load, the memory, um, how much bandwidth it's using. So it's like a full, you know, detailed spec of everything with your Pi hole. So we have that, if I can avoid unplugging it, over here. So the question is, well, what should you get? Should you get the, the, the Pi Zero version or should you get the Pi 3 version? Well, it depends. You know, if you need Ethernet, then definitely, you know, this is going to have Ethernet. You plug it right in and, you know, that's really nice because you'll definitely get better performance over Ethernet. But you know, if you don't mind it being on Wi-Fi, you want to save a couple bucks. The Pi Zero W is going to be a lot less expensive, and uh, it's none of the neither are easier to use. Both are the, you know the same exact software installation. This one just comes with a bigger screen and a nice bigger case. Okay. So two two kits into make your own ad blocker. We have the TF Mini. This is a little, well, it's called a micro lidar, but it's not. It's a it's a time of flight sensor. It comes in a very nice case, which I like. Uh, and it has UART output, and it's kind of unique in that not a lot of sensors have UART output. 
And that can be very handy because you can plug it into a computer with a USB a serial port um, adapter. I have one here I can show on the overhead real fast. But it basically uses infrared light. It's not a laser. And it's got, you know, power, uh, five volt power, ground, and then uh, uh, RX and TX, 3.3 uh, volt logic. Um, we have an Arduino library. You can use it with Arduino uh, that somebody wrote. And um, we also wrote a CircuitPython library, which means you can run it on uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever. Plug this into your FTDI adapter, and then you can actually use this directly on your computer if you'd like. I'm just reading that Python serial data. Uh, so you can make interactive um, projects or motion detection and stuff. But I guess the thing that's really nice about these is um, it comes in a nice case. You know, it's easily mounted and it's got these nice lenses. Works like I think up to uh, 12 meters away. Okay, next up. This is the dub, so the ESP32 Warover. We already had the Warum. <laughs> this yeah. is the Warover. Yeah, I love these names. Um, the Warover is a longer version of the ESP. You probably know this looks a lot like the ESP32 module that's on the Feather. It is very similar, but it's um, bigger and longer because it has a built-in PS RAM chip instead. It has, I think, eight megabytes of PS RAM. And we even decapped one of these. So maybe, I'll get, nice. maybe I'll get real close here so I can show you. Yeah, thanks to Dano for, do you guys just took the cap off? And then make sure I'm zoomed in. Okay, so you got the ESP32 here. That's your classic. I think it's a four megabyte SPI flash. You've got the N10 and all the, the passives, and that's all good. And over here is an eight megabyte PS RAM. So it's this uh, SPI RAM. It's not going to be, of course, as fast as if the RAM was on chip. But given that the instruction memory is on flash anyways, and it probably does some caching on here, um, we do have noticed that there's a couple projects that people like to build where you need to have extra RAM, like a couple of video game emulators. Uh, if you want to have it be like a Game Boy emulator, you do need to buffer a ton of stuff in RAM. Um, this PS RAM will be very, very handy. So it's a longer module. Um, it has the same pinouts. It's just they, they, they kind of moved it from being shorter and some pins on the side. They, the pins are now all along um, these two halves to make room for this uh, honking PS RAM chip. But it still has, um, sorry, the FCC and C your certification uh, markings on it, Telec. So um, great if you're designing a board and there's um, Eagle CAD objects out there if you need them for, uh, for adding this into your product. And maybe we'll make a feather with it. We'll see. It's not out yet. Don't ask. Okay. So that was that. Yes. Okay, next up, there's two stars of the show tonight besides the Double community star. and Yuli Data. It is this. This is Mike. Gorilla's bundle. Yes. That's why the code's bundle. Bundle. So, you know all about the best selling number one book, Getting Started with Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. Gets you started. It's perfect if you want, you're like, I, I want to start learning how to program and make hardware using the Circuit Playground Express with MakeCode or Circuit Python or with Arduino. This book covers all three. So, you'll get going. It's not like a mega book, but it's just enough. I actually think kind of big books are scary. This is this is just the right amount. It's about like a three quarters of an inch thick. Um, I think so. What? Oh yeah. Do you want to go back overhead? Yeah, if you want to share some of the book. Can, yeah, sorry, I gotta. Yep. Hold on, sorry. There's a lot of demos today. Yep. Which is good. I just have to. Um, okay. So it's like a couple hundred pages, and uh, it's full color learning make code um, so it goes through making blocks and dragging them and how to use that to get started with make code then of course blinka shows up um, how to install and use moo and circuit python so you're you're ready to write python code um, as well and how to even got some plotting going on there that's kind of nice and then finally um it has a couple chapters on arduino so how to use the arduino circuit um python to start circuit playground library so you're like, okay, I love this book, best-selling, best book ever. But what if you're like, I don't want to have to pick up all the, what do I need? What do I need? I just want to get, I just want to get, do this thing. So now we have a bundle. Bundle comes with the book, Circuit Playground Express, the base packs. So you get the battery, battery packs and batteries. So you have a remote, you can use it on the go. It's got like lights and audio, so it's great for you know, cosplay projects. USB cables, get a good USB cable so you know it will work. A bundle of Alligator Clip 2 breadboard wire adapters. This is good for a couple of the projects. And then uh, copper tape 
for capacitive touch projects. So you get kind of everything you need to go through the book and build a whole bunch of the projects. And then, of course, the Circuit Playground Express has so many sensors and LEDs built in, you don't need a whole bucket of parts because the parts are already on the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. And tonight, the star yeah. of the show, besides you, Lady A, the community, and all the different team members, room out there is this. The Neo Pixelate Feather, no, sorry, not the Feathering, the Friend. We had the Featherwing, and this is the Friend. I'm, I, there's so many Neo Pixelates. So we have um, a little breadboard adapter. We made a Featherwing version, but this is good for uh, if you're using it with a Metro M0 or Metro M4 and Itsy Bitsy. This is a level shifter booster specifically for NeoPixels. You don't have to use it with NeoPixels, but I don't know what else you'd use it for. It takes eight signals in, um, three volt or five volt logic. There's a little boost converter on it that will generate a clean five volts, and then it lifts those signals to five volts to cleanly drive NeoPixels. And it has, um, you see these uh, RJ45 jacks. That's a really easy way to, if you're gonna wire up a ton of LEDs, um, it makes it easier to, to clip in and out without uh, having to like, needle with a breadboard or little wire adapters because you know it, it, you can have eight wires so four data wires and four grounds okay uh, and we have a for, giant demo here <laughs> yeah the, the demo is kind of enormous but i think maybe if i kind of move yeah. stuff around a little bit okay so here you go yep so you got here the the metro m0 so the this is meant to work with our um, neo pixelate library and the library um runs on the SAMD21 and the SAMD51. So those are the two chips that we recommend. It doesn't run on the Arduino Zero because the Arduino Zero doesn't have enough memory and doesn't have DMA. What's nice about the library is it does it all for you. Like there's no processor time being taken to drive this many pixels. It's all being done with DMA. That's direct memory access. So you just tell it, you know, write these pixel data. It goes off, it does it, and it returns immediately so you don't lose any time to actually toggle all the pixels and it happens all in parallel using um, this timer waveform peripheral that's built into the SAMD21 and 51. So um, to use that library, uh, we recommend you know the friend as an accessory. Again, you see it's like I just I can easily uh, plug in and unplug a ton of uh, NeoPixel strips here. I got like eight strips in, in a big ass pile. Um, you can use it with any SAMD, so it's the M0 board or SAMD51. Um, not every pin can drive the, the NeoPixel because it is, isn't on that peripheral, but you know, all of our boards have at least, except for like the Trinket and the Gemma, they all have at least eight pins that you can use. So uh, in the Metro M0 case, it's pins uh, zero through uh, eight, sorry, zero through um, seven. So the first eight pins, um, those are the pins that you know, we suggest using. And then the Metro M4, it's I think two through seven and then 10 and 11 and then you know each each board's going to be a little bit different um just because of where the timer pins ended up but if you want to add a ton of neopixel to your project uh this little accessory plus our library uh, is really cheap uh use any neopixel compatible strips squares boxes rings whatever you want it can drive you know a couple thousand leds quite easily um and you get tons of processor time to to design how you want your lights to look so you're not spending all your time just twiddling those bits all right, and with that, Lady Ada, is... So many LEDs. Okay.